everyone and welcome back to the Critter Corner. If you didn't know, I went to go meet deep sea giant isopods a couple weeks ago and I posted this video on, on Instagram and it got a ton of views and a ton of comments that I wanted to address. So first things first, these isopods are at Aquarium Encounters in Florida, in the Florida Keys at in Marathon and they are giant deep sea isopods so they are the biggest isopod in the world um and they live in salt water there are freshwater isopods to my understanding too but these that's not what these are so the biggest thing that i got on this video besides that they're disgusting which is not very nice um and this was the video with the baby too people were calling it disgusting and say they were gonna stomp on it eat it and kill it that's not very nice to isopods but the second biggest thing I was getting was people telling me that they're not going to live very long because they don't have the same surface pressure or um, water pressure, air pressure that they would at the seafloor than at the aquarium. And that is true. The pressure is not the same, but I wanted to talk about what I researched and what I found. So these guys have been at this aquarium for two years. And from my understanding, if they were going to die from the pressure, it would have been right when they were brought up or shortly after at this point they have reached kind of an equilibrium with the the water pressure and everything in their body that it's not a problem anymore so how did they bring them up personally i didn't ask them and i'm not 100 percent sure but i wanted to talk about deep sea things in general because i've read that deep sea fish even are possible to bring up to the surface it just depends on how you do it. You have to do it really slowly in a certain way. And the same thing applies for isopods, but isopods are not as sensitive because they have an exoskeleton. Isopods are crustaceans, so they molt. They have a hard exoskeleton. These guys, I touched them. I picked them up. Their exoskeleton is very, very hard, very strong, very tough. So due to that, the pressure is not going to affect them as much because all of their Organs and everything are protected in this very strong, hard exoskeleton. As far as fish goes, they don't have that. So you have to be a lot more careful when bringing them up. But isopods have that, which is the main thing that protects them from the lack of pressure. After being in the aquarium for two years, they've reached an equilibrium in their body. Everything is, all the pressure is the same as with the water. Yeah, so... From my understanding, that's what the deal with the water pressure is. I'm going to link some sources down below too that I used to research. But yeah, if you have any more questions about that or like topics to talk about within that, definitely comment down below because it's very interesting. That's why I'm making this video. It's all very interesting. These isopods are also kept in very cold water. I think it was around 30 degrees Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly from the sign. So they have like the coldness that they would at the seafloor. They just don't have the pressure. As far as lifespan goes, it is fairly unknown for these guys. I've seen sources saying they can live decades, but the general consensus is they live around 10 years. At least that's the consensus right now. Again, they're so hard to research because they're so far down. And although they're not endangered or anything, I, there's just not a lot of research on them. So the consensus right now is they can live around 10 years. A lot of people were saying, okay, they they have the right pressure. They reach an equilibrium. But will it affect their lifespan being kept in captivity? Honestly, we don't know. Because uh, I don't even know if we've been keeping them for 10 years. So I don't even know if they've lived. They Like any of them have lived full lifespans yet. So... It's all so new, we don't know, um, but I would imagine they wouldn't have a shortened lifespan because they're not being hunted or anything like they would be on the seafloor. And once they reach that equilibrium, to my understanding, it seems like they're pretty golden um, for the rest of their lives, but I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I wanted to include that because a lot of people were asking um, about their lifespans so in the wild 10 years in captivity unknown but these guys have lived in captivity for at least two years so that's what I know so the next thing I got is the water pressure isn't a problem they have their exoskeletons but what about 
they're eating. People haven't been able to get them to eat in captivity. So Aquarium Encounters is one of the three aquariums in the entire world to successfully keep marine isopods. And these guys have been there for two years. These isopods I read can go without eating for up to five years, but I talked to someone there and they have been eating. So I don't know where this commenter got that information from, but that's not something that I've really seen as an issue at all. But I did want to say as a fun, interesting fact too, they can go five years without eating. But in this place in particular, they eat. So that's another comment. Another question I got was about captive breeding. Is this baby in this video captive, captive bred? That is something I so wish I asked the people at the aquarium, but I didn't and I regret that a lot. I could always DM them on Instagram. I actually might DM them on Instagram because I don't know if they would know, like the person that runs Instagram, but I watched this video. I'll put like the screenshot of it here but this is the video that i discovered that these are in the u.s and i can go visit them and this i went to the same exact aquarium that the guy did in that video and i don't think the baby was in it so for my best guess i really think that baby was captive bred because they're very very difficult to come across because you have to bring them up from the sea floor it's very deep. Um, so from my understanding, the baby was captive bred. But I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But I also wanted to say that isopods, they have to be fairly healthy to breed, which also goes back to the pressure in eating because they made that baby. I'm 90% sure they made that baby. But I'll also link Aquarium Encounters Instagram down below if anyone wants to ask them themselves. But that's what I think. I really think that baby is captive bred. Um, so yeah. Another comment I got um, a lot. People saying, water really pulleys, all this stuff. Yes, isopods are really pulleys. Those little really pulleys you see on land, I actually keep, they're down here. I actually keep a bunch of colonies of them. Let me see if I can grab. This guy right here, my little zebra, he's the same thing as the big water isopod. So yeah, these are really, just really big marine roly polies. Um, so yeah, roly polies, isopods, pill bugs, some people call them. And these guys, the marine ones, do have the ability to congobate, which means to rope in a ball, but not all isopods can rope in a ball. So fun fact, if you didn't know. Another thing I got questions about was if they're dangerous. To humans, they are not. Isopods will eat pretty much anything that comes across them on the seafloor. They are scavengers. They are not like hunters or anything. If they can get like a big whale carcass on the seafloor, that is prime dinner for them. But they can eat pretty much anything. And their mouths like aren't, they're crustaceans. So they can like, like these little guys, the isopods I just showed that I keep, they can eat carrots. Like they can chomp pretty hard, but... They're not going to hurt you at all. And they have no desire to eat you. They know they can't eat you. So, yeah. I got questions if they're dangerous. They don't have claws or anything. They're literally just big blown up roly polies. So, roly polies can't hurt you. These guys can't really hurt you either. So, that is another question I got. After I posted the video of the baby, people were like, that's a baby? How big are the adults then if that's a baby? Very good question. Adults are around 16 inches long. I have videos of the adults as well um, on my Instagram if you want to go check them out, like the fuller videos. I was commenting everyone, I have videos of the big ones and they none of them watch them. But yeah, the adults can get up to 16 inches, so they are big boys. And then the last question I keep getting, where can I find them to keep them as pets? Unfortunately, right now, the answer is nowhere. You cannot keep them as pets. I was looking into this a little bit because honestly, I would love to keep these guys as pets. As you probably know by now from all the things I've talked about in this video, they would be very hard to navigate because of that surface sea pressure kind of thing. Um, getting them to eat, getting them to breed, 
all that kind of stuff. Uh, they are like taking care of like normal isopods like they eat the same things they like have the same behavior and everything they're just really big but i think the pressure is the biggest thing that you would have to navigate also finding them you can't find them anywhere they're not really like for sale anywhere i was looking up to see if they were even legal to keep as pets it seems like there aren't any laws against it and they're not endangered but how are you gonna find them how are you gonna are you gonna go to the seafloor and get them <laughs> so that's the biggest thing people aren't breeding them for pets i don't even know 100 percent sure if florida um aquarium encounters bred that baby so they're mainly for education right now and i don't know if it'll ever really be possible to keep them as pets because of that pressure thing so it's very interesting of course i would love to keep one as a pet they're so cool and i truly feel like in my lifetime i don't think they're gonna be captive right enough um for them to be in the pet trade really at all so yeah keep them in the aquariums right now and i know everyone loves them except for those really mean comments but i think this was like a once in a lifetime experience we drove 20 hours to the Florida Keys to go see them. And like, I specifically, like, we planned this whole vacation around them. And I am so incredibly lucky I got to see them. Especially since like, you don't know how long they're gonna last in this aquarium. You don't know pretty much a lot of things about them. So I had the chance to go see them. So I made it kind of a mission. So yeah. I think they are so very incredibly interesting and I definitely would love to talk more about it. I think I am slowly becoming the giant isopod girl on Instagram, which I am very happy to take that title. So maybe I'll make even more videos about them, do more research um, and maybe find some experts on them. I don't know. So all very interesting. I'm super excited to see what happens to them in the future and yeah so comment any any thoughts anything um that you want to talk about revolving these guys so yeah thanks so much for watching and i will see you on the next one bye